Hello and welcome to Infinity. Sometimes whilst you can select things with the very comprehensive selection tools and making masks, it's nice to start off with a black and white layer, which is a, you can do more things with before you actually use that in masking. So the basic principle is that I'm going to put in a pixel layer here. I'm going to paint on that and let's just use white because that's normally what you do. And you can always see here that this is already a bit clumsy because I can't, I can overlap things and I can't see what I'm painting. I can see what I'm painting by turning down the opacity and when I've overshot I can use the erase brush and then turn this back up again. And now I want to have black up here if it's going to be a mask and a way to do that is to go to edit and matte and make sure the colour here is black just click on that for that and apply that and I've now got this representation here which I'm going to use as a mask and I can right click on that and rasterize to mask and I've got that selects and I will often pull it things down to the bottom if I don't need them for the moment and I'll drag them drop that on to where I want to use it later. But there's a better way than that. And for this I would use a selection brush here and make sure I've got snap to edges, add on there and then just paint the area I want to get to. Use a refine to tidy up the edges and be able to paint over the things like trees here. So I've got a better selection and apply that. Now I've got everything selected which I want to be white in the picture. So to make this white I need to go to add pixel layer to create the black and white layer that will be a mask. Go to edit and fill and that will fill that with whatever colour you've got here. You can click on that to change it but then apply that. Hit Control D to get rid of the marching ants but now I want black up here. And the way to get to black is again edit, but now matte, because matte fills in transparent areas. So I click on that, make sure the custom colour is black, and apply that. So I've now got a black and white layer, which I can use as selection. But it means I can also go in here, edit, change it, do things with it. And the way to do that, which is useful, if I go to the channels tab here, then if I look down here, because this is a black and white, that down here the pixel red, green and blue here are going to be exactly the same. So if I right click on one of those and say create spare channel I've saved this selection effectively down here. I can drag this now down out the way. I can do something like go here, put in an adjustment like curves and right click on that here and say load to curves there. So now when I adjust this it's just doing that selected area. So I'll just delete that for now. What I can do as well is other ways of painting in black and white. So I can go to a gradient tool and on my pixel layer here I can paint in this. Change the opacity for a moment just to make sure I get this down to about the right layer there. So I've got a a gradient across the sky, turn the opacity back up again and I can save this down here but also all I need to do is drag this down to the bottom here but now I can start com combining these here. So let's turn off the top layer for the moment, take this layer here and I can use blend modes. If I go to add it combines the two because internally white is held as one and black as zero. Or, more usefully here, I can go down to subtract. So this subtracts the land from that gradient. And I've now got the gradient selected but excluding the land. So this is quite handy. Now because it's com combination here, I can take a composite down here. Any one of those, right click and create spare channel. So I'll put that down here, which I can always rename here and call that sky gradient 
and then if I go back up here put in something like curves and say I'm going to darken that here but I want to darken only that sky with on a gradient right click on there load to curves alpha and there I've got that ability to adjust it like that. So this is quite useful. One more thing, thing that you can do is you can do sort of more complex like luminosity type things. So I can hit Control J here to get just a layer here, which I'm going to go to adjustment here and go to black and white. I'll just drag that onto there so it's connected. But now I can change the black and white within this image. So if I change this here, I'm making the sky darker there, the blue, cyan and blue in the sky, I can adjust that as well. Trees can is contain green and yellow, so I can adjust those. But suppose I say I actually want to select those areas, but these are darker areas. So quite simply, I can go to here, this here, and I can put in an invert layer. And now white for selection are the darker areas. So let's drag that onto there so it's in one layer. So now if I go to layer and merge visible, I create myself a single layer like that. I can drag this out the way and I can take that, go down here and look for what's visible. The composite will show you what's visible. I can see all this so I can use that. And because it's a single layer, I could also use that as well. So I could just right click there and create spare channel. Then down the bottom here, I've got that selected. Right click, rename and call that luminosity, say. And take that out of the way, go here, put in my adjustment, my curves and Go to that one here, right click, and load to that. Now, because I've got the darker areas selected, when I'm adjusting here, I'm adjusting, making the darks darker or lighter. And there we go. That's it, and thank you very much for watching.